Ever notice how one small muscle tweak dissolves in a day while another aches for months, draining your sleep and energy? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Today, we're digging into the science behind that difference and how strategic movement can keep brief soreness from turning into a life altering pain loop. This episode centers on new findings published in 2025 and a sweeping evidence review that together reveal a single practical theme regular, appropriately chosen physical activity, quiets inflammation, retrains your nervous system, and restores resilience. We'll translate the lab data into clear actions you can begin using right after listening. I'm Ethan Foster, guiding our discussion, and with me is Alara Skye, whose focus on natural health helps make complex mechanisms straightforward. Neither of us dominates. Instead, we balance perspectives so you gain a full picture of what movement does inside your cells, immune tissues, and brain circuits. First, let's name the problem. Acute pain is supposed to taper as tissues heal, but when immune signals stay switched on, inflammation smolders, pain spreads, and your brain amplifies every twinge. Researchers in Campinas pinpointed the molecular crossroads where recovery can stall or proceed. They induced mild muscle inflammation in mice and measured a steep rise in a pain-driving chemical released by specific immune cells. Blocking that chemical lowered both swelling and discomfort, proving it drives the transition to chronic pain. Pharmacology wasn't the only lever. They tested movement, too. A separate group of mice swam daily before any injury occurred. Remarkably, those active animals never triggered the harmful immune cascade. Levels of the pain chemical stayed low, tissue healed on schedule, and the mice avoided long-term hypersensitivity entirely, unlike their sedentary peers. Exercise didn't just lower inflammation. It switched on the body's own pain relief network. Movement signaled an anti-inflammatory pathway that calms immune overreaction. When scientists blocked that pathway, the benefits disappeared, proving this internal switch, activated only through consistent activity, is essential for keeping pain in check. Translation for you. When you move regularly, your immune cells receive a clear instruction to repair rather than attack. That single instruction can stop a temporary strain from consuming months of your life. Movement is not merely good advice. It's a direct biochemical command. The brain tells a parallel story. University of Iowa, scientists monitored the rostral ventromedial medulla, your built-in pain dial. During healthy exercise, the area releases endorphins, producing exercise-induced hypoalgesia, an evidence-backed drop in how strongly you feel discomfort. Occasionally, the opposite happens. Exercise-induced hyperalgesia, where pain spikes. That occurs when workout intensity overshoots personal tolerance and triggers a different chemical pathway. Recognizing this variability lets you select activities that dial pain down instead of up. If a brisk walk eases tension, but sprint intervals leave you throbbing, your nervous system is speaking. Honor that data. Steady, repeatable practice trains the brain's dial toward relief and makes hypoalgesia the default setting. Large-scale human data reinforce the message. A Cochrane review pooled 381 randomized trials on adults with osteoarthritis, low back pain, fibromyalgia, period pain, and more. Interventions ranged from tai chi and yoga to resistance bands, balance drills, and aerobic sessions. Across those studies, pain scores usually dropped modestly, and in seven reviews, the decrease exceeded 10 points on a 100-point scale, already considered clinically meaningful. In three cases, pain fell more than 30%, matching benchmarks often used in drug trials. Even more impressive, physical function improved in 14 reviews, sometimes dramatically. Participants climbed stairs, carried groceries, rose from chairs, gardened, and completed work shifts with less strain. These everyday victories confirm that you can regain real-world capability and independence, even if some residual pain lingers. Safety mattered, and the findings were reassuring. Only a quarter of trials formally tracked side effects, yet serious events were virtually absent. The most common complaint was temporary muscle soreness that faded within weeks, an acceptable trade for long-term freedom of movement. Flexibility in program design also emerged. 
Frequencies spanned from once weekly to several micro-sessions per day, and durations ranged from two minutes to two hours. That breadth means you can tailor routines to your schedule, resources, and starting fitness without sacrificing benefit. Let's translate the evidence into a five-step action plan. Step one, start with low-impact movement, such as walking, gentle swimming, or tai chi. These activities circulate blood, interrupt inflammatory signaling, and introduce motion without jarring vulnerable tissues. Step two, introduce light strength training. Body weight squats, resistance bands, or small hand weights rebuild muscle that cushions joints. Stronger support structures stabilize your spine, hips, and knees, a key upgrade if you're managing arthritis, back pain, or fibromyalgia. Step three, pursue consistency over intensity. Aim for daily sessions, even if they're just 10 minutes, and link them to established habits. Maybe move right after brushing your teeth or while your morning coffee brews. Regularity retrains your nervous system's pain filter better than sporadic high effort. Step four, track your pain numerically before and after each session. A quick zero to 10 rating helps you notice patterns. If pain spikes more than two points above baseline, scale back next time or switch to a milder modality until sensitivity eases. Step five, add variety. Rotate walking days with yoga, resistance circuits with pool exercises, or balance drills with stretching. Novel movement stimulates different muscle groups, keeps motivation high, and continually nudges your brain's pain circuits toward flexibility rather than hypersensitivity. Beyond physical measures, several trials tracked emotional well-being. Results were mixed, yet some studies reported large boosts in quality of life and mood, especially when strength work or yoga paired with mindful breathing. Crucially, none showed psychological harm supporting experimentation without fear of worsening outlook. Put all of this together and a clear plan emerges. Choose low impact movement, add gentle resistance, stay consistent, monitor response, and rotate activities. These five steps form a cycle that strengthens tissue, cools inflammation, and re-educates the brain, all while respecting your personal limits and daily realities. Your challenge, choose one low impact activity, walking, swimming, or Tai Chi, and practice it for 10 minutes every day this week, rating your pain before and after each session. Notice how small, steady motion rewires your discomfort. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.